This program is brought to you by Emory University. How can mice like these help us understand how one generation transfers behavioral traits to its descendants? We of course can't use humans because it's just too complicated. We can't study multiple generations in humans and we can't manipulate the process in humans to understand mechanism and causation. Mice provide the perfect model. In fact, these mice have helped shed new light on the emerging field of epigenetics, which has profound implications on the way we might one day treat the effects of trauma. It's been shown for over 100 years that we can take a mouse, expose them to a mild stressor, and pair that stressor with a sensory cue so that they will then avoid that sensory cue, whether it's a smell or a sound or a visual cue. And there is evidence in humans in metabolic cases such as the Dutch hunger winter or the Swedish famine where there's been profound starvation in a generation that that somehow has changed the metabolic processes in subsequent generations and that seems to be an epigenetic mechanism and we were really interested in whether such processes may be going on in our model systems. Now Emory researchers Kerry Ressler and Brian Dias have shown that an experience linked with a smell can modify the architecture of the nervous systems in later generations. They have published their findings in Nature Neuroscience. What we found in the study was that conditioning animals or training them to associate a particular smell with this mild foot shock gives us descendant generations that are slightly more sensitive to this smell and their brain devotes more real estate to processing the smell. And this is about 50 microns. To our minds, we needed to figure out how this was actually occurring. And there are two real possibilities. One is biological transmission, which is very similar to cultural transmission and you learning from your parents or your grandparents as to how things are done. And the, and the other possibility was an inheritance of these particular traits. So they separated mice pups from their biological parents and allowed for them to be raised by unrelated mice that had not been conditioned to avoid a certain smell. And what we found, shockingly, is that the neuroanatomical changes still persisted. That is, the brain still devoted more real estate to processing that cue that was salient to the ancestral generation. This study adds to a mounting body of evidence that lifestyle choices and trauma can have profound repercussions beyond one's own life. And one day we might be able to use this knowledge to the advantage of both mice and men. If we take the adult and train them to no longer be afraid, will it prevent that process from transmitting to the next generation. That might have very important implications for treating at-risk populations. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.